Welcome to 10 Intentional Minutes with Janine. I am so privileged and honored to once again have my mom, Nelly Swanepoel, in studio with me today. You know, this is really a rare occasion. Since she doesn't even live close, she actually comes from Dubai and she's been living there for more than a decade. And this is really a moment for me. It's a, it's a time to celebrate and something that I'm truly thankful for. And in my book, I speak about intent for the souls. One of the intentionality principles that we can apply to live a rewarding life. Now, when we talk about intent for the soul, my mom taught me a really powerful lesson growing up, and that is if it doesn't hurt the soul. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit of what that means to us. Sure, I will do so. But first, I will say thank you so much for having me. It's a great honor for me to be with you on your show. And <laughs> I'm just such a proud mother. And all the mothers outside, you will understand my feeling. (laughs) So back to what's hurting the soul. You know, when you were growing up, we wanted to give you the confidence Mm. to take your own decisions. But to allow for that, we had to create the environment where you will feel safe Mm. to take confident decisions. It's true, we had a lot of conversation Yes, because you could motivate why it was supposed to be allowed Mm. or not. Okay, you never got to the or not. That was (laughs) our part. (laughs) But you know that it was so great that once we discovered and all the decisions were really Christian based Mm. is whether if we take a decision, it will hurt your soul or not. And if it wouldn't hurt your soul, Why not? We were not trying to set a norm. Mm. We wanted for you to follow your own thoughts, your own dreams, and take your own decisions. If I think about my children as well, something that they normally say is, my inner body and my outer body is not saying the same thing. And that's basically what we're saying with this is your your soul and your body must agree. So if it's going to hurt the soul, then no, it's not the right thing to do. And if it doesn't hurt the soul, then it's not the right thing to do. So maybe let's have an example. I can, I can give you an easy one is with Jill, my loving husband, is a very militant. He loves rules. So I'll tell you a little bit of an inside joke that maybe you don't know. But before you come and visit, I always have to tell him, remember if it doesn't hurt the soul the reason for that is this is is you are very famous for having sweeties for breakfast that's true some things in life really doesn't change (laughs) and again it's one of those things will it really hurt the soul it's not necessarily the healthiest thing to do but it's also not one of those things that we do on a daily basis so another thing that i love that you do is you will eat your dessert first and then you will start with the rest of the food why because it doesn't hurt the soul oh that's right and i mean i love dessert and i love sweet (laughs) stuff much more than food (laughs) Although I know I need to have my food. Exactly. And that is the same. And I can still remember Joel's face the first morning when the children asked me, Oh, are we going to have chocolates for breakfast this morning? <laughs> and I said, Of course we're going to have. <laughs> and Joel was really like, Mom, what are you doing now in my house? <laughs> and it was like, Joel, it doesn't hurt the soul. Yes. We're not going to do it tomorrow again. <laughs> Uh, so it's it exactly works. like that. Another example that I can remember was Altus when he was around grade seven and he wanted to frost or peroxide his hair. Do you remember that? Oh, will I ever forget that? <laughs> I mean, Peter Papa, you know that he was very stringent and he believed that boys don't go to hairdressers. They go to a barber shop to get their hair cut. And he was around about June. He started to ask this. But he was very clever because he came to ask me first and then I said, okay, let me work on this. <laughs> but you need to give me time. It's one of those that you have to ask at exactly the right time, exactly the right mood. You have to plan it. You have to plan it intentionally. Intentionally. You know that. And um, then I got Papa so far to agree with that. If it's in December, 
Yes. And we can cut all his hair before he goes to high school in January. So I sat Altus down and I really told him, you can do this because you have the agreement now of both parents. But remember, it's not going to be nice. It's going to be difficult. And it's long. It's long. It is four to five hours. You've never done it before. And you are really going to have itchy skin um, it's going to burn it's going to be sore everything but if a teenager has made up their mind it's kind of done it's done <laughs> and i mean i could say what i wanted to and that is exactly where hurting the soul is coming in because frosting your hair doesn't hurt the soul exactly not at all and if you saw his face when i went to the hairdresser for the third time and it was six hours later and he was the only person in the hairdresser because they were supposed to close already and it was like wow so two it's weeks not as easy later, as what it seems no two weeks later i asked him so son are we going to do it again in june next year <laughs> never and he never did it again exactly but it was such a great experience mm. because it taught him a lesson of being able to take a decision that yeah. doesn't hurt the soul and it also helped us to set up goals for our soul now it sounds silly why would you put a goal for your soul we put goals or God ordained actions for life, which stands for goal. We put those things in place in order to help us to grow and to handle situations better. So I've got four or five points that I want to share with you that how you can grow your soul or how you can set goals for your soul. The first thing that I learned, especially from that, because now I could gauge between a good feeling, a bad feeling, and I realized, well, I can start to grow here. The th first thing that I started doing was a goal for my soul was to spend time with God. Now it's a pretty easy thing to do, but it's a goal because you have to set out time for it. You have to grow in it. It doesn't yes, just come easy. But that is that is really where you learned that in an early age because you had to plan for it. It's not easy. Yeah. It is normally other things that take that place. Absolutely. Intentionally, you need to plan for that. Yeah. Another thing that helped me a lot was to forgive people. Now, again, one of the really big things, and I know we've all got different sayings and feelings around forgiveness, but for me, I needed to forgive really quickly. Why? So that I could grow spiritually and move on. But without those lessons, I wouldn't have even realized one of those things. That's right. And you know what it really helped when you say if it hurts the soul mm. and if it doesn't, mm. it's you take the feeling out, you yes. take the emotion out. Because now you are yeah. taking a real decision yeah. without emotions attached to it. Absolutely. The other thing that, that I also learned was to intentionally grow spiritually. So it's easy to say, I need to spend time with God, but I needed to intentionally spend time with God to grow spiritually. That was things like spending time in the word of God, spending time in worship. In other words, I had to sacrifice time with friends, coffees, work, meetings. I had to put that stuff aside and sacrifice that for something greater. That is really something that helped me when I started to lay out my goals for the soul. Yes, and if I think about it now, even when when you were a child and you ask something, you had to go back mm -hmm. and you had to give us a motivation mm -hmm. of why we have to say yes. Yes. And during that time, you were also, mm -hmm. you couldn't play, you yeah. couldn't do what you wanted to do because yeah. you were busy motivating. I remember mm -hmm. once I, I knocked on your door because if your door was closed, that was the agreement. You have your own privacy. Mm. And you said, yes. And I said, it's me. And you said, yes, come in. And I walked in and you looked at me and you said, you only have two minutes because <laughs> I'm busy with writing my motivation, but I will listen to you. <laughs> and for me, that was great because it's forecasting that we tried to learn you all the way. So what we as parents had to remember was that what we teach 
-hmm. we we will need to be prepared to receive it back as well. Absolutely. It also helped me to know that I was spending time with like-minded people. I didn't know it at the time, but later in life I realized that I was spending time with the same kind of people. And, and I also believe in you attract who you are. And therefore I was spending time with the right people. Therefore I was growing spiritually. I was growing emotionally. And I've really got you and my family to thank, to, to thank for that, you know, because it doesn't, it doesn't just happen. It's an intentional decision to spend time with the right people. Yes. And having that smile on your face mm -hmm. reminded me of one of my business trips where I was sitting next to a lady in a plane and she was from Nigeria and I'm from South Africa and it was somewhere in China and we just felt that connection mm. and then at some point she said to me you know you really have something different about you when your eyes are smiling all the time and sometimes your mouth is moving to smile with your eyes <laughs> and she said share with me what you have and I could share actually my faith with her mm. because I believe that it's Jesus' light that is shining through. It's part of intentionally growing and setting goals for the soul, is sharing your faith with others. Exactly. And that is such a privilege and that is why we are on earth mm. and it's to work for God. Mm. And it is really not necessary to speak the words mm -hmm. because your life may be the Bible that no one gets the opportunity to read. Mm. And smiling with a Jesus smile is yes. really getting you there. Absolutely. You also taught me that you are never fully dressed without a smile. So that it's something that we focus on because it truly lets in the light and it changes the atmosphere in a room. So I just want to say thank you for changing the atmosphere in my life only, not in the room and intentionally helping me to grow my soul. I love you. That's my pleasure. I love you too. And you know, intentionally, a smile is contagious. Absolutely.